compared to any other generic type of an ME switcher. Um, that's uh, impressively fast. Load my production Kairos. Three, two, one, go. And this is my production load. That was it. Hi everyone, today we are back at our studio to showcase the process of live compositing with Kairos. From the setup to switching, Kairos transforms the way you go live. I invite you to join Helge, our Kairos product specialist, as he demonstrates the simplicity of building a production layout like the one you can see next to me. Without further ado, let's start with the setup. Hi everyone, um, let's start building a production on Kairos from scratch. To do so, typically I'm um, starting with a production wizard and uh, saying I want to start with a various layout like basic automation, 2ME or so. I start with a simple basic production and you see right away um, that Kairos offers me a, a certain multi-viewer layout. The very first thing I will do just for the recording actually is in my layout for multi-viewer one I will make this a full screen shot over here which is right now sitting on black um, because I have no other cross point selected um, apart from this. I will also go into my screen over here and will remove the uh, under monitor display. So I'm going to my advanced settings over here and I will hide the label position. Hide. Now on the right hand side over here, we see there's a 16 split and typically what we're starting with in this mo at this moment is we're going into my, the input section over here and start labeling the cross points over here. In order to do so, you just put the cursor mark to it, make a right mouse selection and rename or F2 key in the keyboard and type in the name what you want to put in into the cross point. Now, the next thing typically on my multi-viewer layout, um, I'm dealing with saying, okay, let's say I want to do a quad split on the right hand side over here. And then I typically use uh, one section of that image over here, I delete this one out and I'll add various things like, for instance, I will add an uh, analog clock, for instance, uh, just put this in and then I can use the move button over here and move this in and use the wheel in order to resize it and so on and so on. Add some more elements like for instance um, digital clocks, analog clocks, GPU metering for instance um, and put this all into the screen over here. Um, what I need to have on my multi-viewer setting. Now on the left hand side over here you see that my factory presets. You can start as a building block um, with these elements and once I'm done with that I simply go into one of my user presets, make a right mouse click and store the elements. So you see also a small little thumbnail appearing to describe what is the layout for this. Coming into a situation here, uh, I want to load my elements like for instance for my clips, for my RAM recorders or RAM players and my stills. Um, in my clip player typically over here, this is playing back straight from the internal system drive uh, to import images or import clips. Uh, you do a right mouse click, you can build new directories to organize your work a little better, import the clip and pick one of these clips and just simply import it into the system. Then they would sit on the hard drive and from here on they would be automatically decoded while playing back. RAM player is the same um, idea. Um, the only difference here that this is a proprietary um, format uh, on the clips which is uncompressed. Um, but the mechanism is simply the same. Same is true, of course, also for stills. Now, a unique thing over here is uh, for Kairos is when you see this appearing checkerboard, that Kairos automatically also sees that there's alpha coming with a still or even with one of the clips that's alpha part of the clip. Now, once it's on the drive, um, then you would simply go in saying, I want to load this into my RAM. So I load this, for instance, to RAM. You see the progress bar and do the same thing over here and uh, for the mass drive over here. And um, I will do the same kind of thing um, in my stills. So we'll only use one background image just that we see the idea of it. Uh, load this to RAM and I will load also this uh, border file into RAM. Be aware of when I'm hovering with a mouse over here, you see also informations like for instance the codec and you see also the resolution. Now. Coming into my scene controls over here, you see that is my main and all of my sources right now is black. That's why the screen is appearing black all the time. Let's say I want to pick up this still I was just loading into RAM uh, to be my background image. And um, going in here saying this one is supposed to be 
in my Panda News 1080p. That's the loaded image, the two loaded images. And I will pick this one to be on my background screen. Now, these are all the elements saying like for stills and for ramps and for clips, that's what I'm putting in. I renamed my inputs. Now, if I want to use, let's say also so-called effects inputs, uh, which can be used for, let's say, organization of cameras, organization of uh, source groups, or even though saying I want to brand a cross point, this all can be done within effects inputs. I will go for only one example in this X course here, saying the way I'm using um, quite often effects inputs. So my effects inputs container, which is empty at this moment, I can also organize this in uh, new directories and put some work into that. So we'll call this new one camera. And this camera container, which is empty at this moment, I want to use a new effects input. So can you also use the shortcut Control N from the keyboard to shorten this work? So let's say my input number one, camera one, so to speak. Um, so it appears now here in this group. So Control N again. So I want to have my input number two over here. And I will do this only for, um, for inputs, just to give you an idea of that. Then I want to label my inputs, saying this is my input number one, so we'll call it only one, F2, uh, over here, F2, one, and cursor down, F2, two, cursor down, F2, three, enter, cursor down, F2, four, enter. Now I have me my input groups over here, and the way of how I can use those signals in my scene over here, which is called main. However, main is just a C name that could be Peter, Paul, Mary, ME1, ME2, give it whatever name you want. And at this moment over here, you see, um, I have various um, cross points automatically mapped into Procommand preset. Um, this has been handled by the source options. Um, and let's say right after black, I want to put in my group of effects inputs. So I'm going to my plus marker over here saying I want to have my effects inputs and I want to use the camera container over here. And now all of a sudden, you see appearing here in my GUI that those cross points, one, two, three, four, which I've just labeled in my effects input group appearing on my crossbar. However, the situation here, let's say for instance, camera four is breaking down and the director will tell me, okay, camera three is taking the two shots from four. And the TD will freak out because all of macros and uh, snapshots and timelines, whatever work and multi viewers and stuff will not work any longer. It is as simple as saying, you know what, then when four has been handled by three, I simply put another input into that and it's all fixed. Tally, multi-viewer, all the effects work, all done. Go into the clip layers and uh, load some footage into my clip layers. Actually, um, in here, my next series of Kairos. I want to have this arena playing back in my channel number one and have it in loop mode and play. And on my se second channel over here, I want to have the uh, game content and drag this in here. Loop is activated and play it back. Coming back to my scenes menu over here, and I want to put in a, a box onto that scene on my background uh, using my layer one and rename the layer and call it layer box over here. And I will also make sure that I clean up all my source option, which are on default at this moment, having all sorts of stuff in here, which I don't need for that shot. I'm putting in all my clip players, channel one and two, uh, appearing in that area. I want to select clip layer one over here and with the space bar, I can enable the layer and disable the layer with the return key. I can go into the source menu uh, and change the source here also from the menu. Okay, now this one over here, I want to transform, I enable my 2D transforms, uh, make it a little smaller and do some slightly repositioning over here. And I also want to change the geometry uh, a little by changing the crop. So I can use the crop controls within the screen, uh, make this a little more like squared, something like that, and probably a little smaller here. That's good. Good enough, a little center in here. That's my image. Now, the next thing I want to use actually in here is saying I want to use the border frame, which I uploaded uh, in my stills. Now, therefore, using the option called the texture border effect over here and enable this will auto scale the 256 by 256 image geometry and applies it to my box over here. 1080p, use the border, and you see it appears here on that screen right away. Auto scaled to that image proportion. 
no any other adjustment. I can make change the margin. I can have somewhat more um, advanced settings down here. But by default, it will exactly surrounding my image. Now from here on, I also want to enable for this layer to build a so-called preset side of it. So I now have a program and a preset bus to this cross point over here. Now I can simply swap the cross point, which is then reflected also in here. Um, but I can also build a transition for this. Now saying, come into my background only, and I will lose that layer for a second. And on my background, I can do a, a swap between one of my cross points and the background image. And I will want to build um, a replay wipe using the ramp clips I was loading down in here. The volleyball, the volleyball guy over here with his according wipe mask, animated mask. Coming back to the scenes and going to my transitions from my background. Deleting the transition using the spacebar over here, saying I want to create a new user. Um, new user wipe, replay wipe, and they call it replay. Replay is good enough. Replay and going to the edit dialog or control E and applying the fill signal. And as long as there is a alpha channel detected, uh, which is here um, monitored with the, with the checkerboard background, then I don't have to specify the key signal because it's already part of the fill. And a B mask is supposed to be this one over here. And um, then confirming this, and that's my replay wipe. Now, by simply double click this, I will address it into the background or by dragging and dropping it into that segment. And then I've also replay wipe in here. Duration should be 41 frames. And now from here, I can simply take the fader arm and drag this across the screen or I simply use the auto trans button and move it like that one over here. Now coming back to my box layer. And the box layer will have the preset enabled as well, saying here I want to do a simple mix in the background, but I want to apply the replay wipe into my box layer. Now come into my scenes again and turn this box layer on um, like that. And now come back to my transitions and now run the replay wipe within here with 41 frames. And now you see I run the replay wipe within a single layer over here. At this moment, I want to save this production with all of the individual elements. I have the loaded clip players, I have the still elements, I have um, the background still, um, the RAM elements and whatnot. So I've enabled all my effects inputs, I've labeled all of the cross points for setting up my multi viewers. And by simply going to my production and save or save as, I want to save this production uh, within this name, Production Kairos. So Production Kairos and save this. Do you want to override this? Yes, I want to override this. I can also have given another name. Um, I take them as it is. Now production new, new basic production and blank out everything. So my RAMs will be unloaded, my clips, my clip players will be unloaded. See clip players are blank, RAM players are blank, uh, no RAM element is loaded, stills are all done, uh, panel news, no still anymore left, um, new layout in my uh, multi viewers. And now loading my production again, you see the last five productions are always within this area over here. Load my production, Kairos, three, two, one, go. Um, and this is my production load. That was it. So compared to any other generic type of an ME switcher, um, that's uh, impressively fast.